Well, that's good. And if it's not, you can feel free to lie to me. No. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty open to feedback. So if you have questions or issues, feel free to bring them to my attention. All right. Uh, we left off. Seems like like a long time ago, but it was last Wednesday, I guess. Starting CSS stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend more time on CSS. Um, by no means are we going to completely cover CSS, because that's something we do throughout the semester. But I want to make sure that we have the basic idea of it down, then that, that we can do a few things with it, and talk really about the benefits of it, the purposes of it, and so on. And then we'll move on to the next topic. So let me bring down what we had last time. Okay. Here's what we did last time. All right, <clears throat> this looks a little different than the pages that we've done thus far because we added a little bit of styling to it. Uh, the big split between the two languages that we learned too far, I would describe it this way. HTML is responsible for the content of the web page. And also the logical structure. What I mean by logical structure is sort of like how stuff is divided into sections. How you have a header, you have a nav, you have a section or multiple sections, you have a footer. That's what I mean by logical structure. It was broken down into sections. Um, CSS is responsible for the appearance and the finished layout. We won't do it yet, but for example, the nav section is after the head section. So there's a head section, there's a nav section, and so on. So logically, that's how the page is structured, but the physical layout could be much different than that. The navigation could go along the side over here. So it doesn't have to follow the header the way that the code is. The way that it actually looks can be different than logically how it's laid out. So that's what I mean when I say that HTML is responsible for the logical structure, that is, is broken down into sections. CSS is responsible for physically how that's going to look when we're done styling it. Now in this example, we have everything in one page.
the style, along with the whole page. And the HTML has a logical structure. This part's the header, this part's the nav. Later on in the course, we'll be able to control how the appearance of the page is and physically how the stuff is laid out. Initially, we start out talking about colors because assuming that there's no one in this class that's colorblind, colors um, are the, the easiest to, to show in an obvious way, you know. Um, instead of like saying, well, look, I put an extra space here or there. Question? Oh, I have Okay, that's all right. Just push your button again. Push the button again. There you go. All right. In this case, we have the, the, the file, the CSS code, as part of this page. All right. Let's make a clone of this page. All right. So I'm going to do save as, and I'm going to save it as FAQ2. And I'm going to make this one software development. And I'll just put two questions on here. So I'm going to save this, and if I look at it, it looks just like the other one. Which makes sense because they both have the same CSS code. So that looks like that. And that is good. It's good that your pages have a consistent look and feel. Right, because that helps make your experience have some continuity. It, people don't have to look around in different spots for different things. Could you imagine a website where the navigation was in a different place on every page, for example? That would kind of be kind of be an odd experience, and you'd spend some time looking for the navigation instead of knowing immediately where it is. The problem, though, doing it this way. With having all the code in one file, is what if, we, what if we have to change this? What if I look and I say, you know what? That yellow is just a little too bright for this early in the morning. So I want to go and change it. Let me look up another color. All right. Now, if you notice, some of the common colors you can put the name in. All right. And you can say blue, yellow, red, black, whatever. But it's not clear what every color is. Like my shirt. Is that blue or gray? I don't know. Yeah, but you know, there's probably a word that describes it, right? But that's imprecise. The blue on that screen, how is that from the blue of my jeans? It's a shade, it's different, yeah. So words can be imprecise when describing colors. 
Now, there are some colors that have very specific names. Like if you go to the paint store, there's like Kelly Green, Forest Green, all that. But also, you could come up with a custom color. You could bring a paint chip in and say, I want this color of green. And they'll custom mix it for you, right, if, if they're a good, good paint person. It is, yeah. And so what I'm trying to get is for some colors, there's names. For other colors, um, there's a, a numeric code that you can put in to say exactly what color you want. So let's look at HTML colors. So I could find this chart, HTML color codes. And this has a color picker where you can pick, in general, the kind of color that you want. Like, I want yellow. And I can click over there, or I can click over here, and so on. All right? We'll hold our thought on that one. Because I, I want to look, first of all, at HTML color, color names. And there's a whole bunch of them. There's, there's, all modern browsers support the following 140 color names. So let's find a paler yellow. Lemon chiffon. Aw. <laughs> Not only is it a nice color, it sounds tasty too, right? No, wait a minute, chiffon's cloth, right? I was thinking lemon meringue. I was going to say a nice lemon chiffon pie, but no, that's a lemon meringue pie. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to make the page be lemon chiffon. Pardon me? Exactly. <laughs> okay. So I changed the color from lemon from yellow to lemon chiffon. So I'm changing the color of my first FAQ page. So if I review it, yeah, there we go. It's a paler color. The problem is that if I go and look at the other one, the other one's still the same. Because it's a different web page, correct. Ideally, we would want to, I would want to make it so that if I change the color on one page, it changed the colors on all of the pages. To link them all together. Because if you notice, if you go to different websites, a lot of the visual aspects of the website are the same on every page that you go to. The color schemes, the fonts, the positioning of things, all those things are common or consistent between different pages. And that's, that's like basic good web design. You don't want your pages to look inconsistent. Could you imagine if you got a book where every page of the book looked a little different? They were different sizes and they had different font. It would look like a ransom note, right? Where people are cutting out. Exactly, right? So therefore, we want some consistency. The way that we can make it consistent is not have the HTML and the CSS code in the same file. But we're going to create a separate file for the CSS code. And then we're going to link all of our pages together. Now, we're going to do it with two pages, which is pretty cool. So if we just change one page, if we just change the, the CSS file, it will change both pages. But could you imagine if you had dozens of pages? All right. <clears throat> I can remember to go and change two things, but if I have dozens of things to change, I'm liable to forget one, I'm liable to make an error when I cut and paste code, whatever. Therefore, I'm going to take the code out of the HTML page and put it in its own file. So, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to copy just the HTML code. I'm actually going to cut it out of here and paste it into my new file. Notice when I do that, I don't need the style tag. I don't need the style tag because 
the web page is going to identify this as CSS code in a different way. So I don't need the style tag. Now, what I'm going to do then is replace that style tag with a link. And this is a different kind of link than like a hyperlink where you click on it and go somewhere else. So I'm going to tell the browser that it's a style sheet. That's what rel equals style sheet means. It's in a plain old text file that contains CSS. And finally, I'm going to use the href attribute again to say what the name of the file is. So I'm going to go and name this file. a CSS file and I'm going to call it style.css so now it's called style.css so my href is going to be style.css and I'm going to copy that code into my other page. I'm going to replace all the style code that was there with a link to the CSS file. So what this says is this points this page to say this is the file you get your style from. So the style code is no longer in this file, the style code is in a separate file. And now, if we go and view this page, if we change it, that page looks this way, this page looks this way. If we change anything else about the page, I will only make that change in one place, in this file. Let's say, for example, in my H1s, I want the background to be white. I don't have to go in on both pages and say background white, only in my CSS file. So if I say background white, I'll save it, and both of these pages will be changed. That probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> and I messed up my entire website. Ooh. But guess what the good news is? I can fix the entire website at the same time. I can say background or color black and both of these pages will get the same color. Pardon me? I thought when you wrote background I thought something completely different was about to change color. Okay. Alright. So now I'm back to business. Alright. So the whole idea about putting your, your code in a separate file is that to make changes to all of your pages, you only need to make the changes to the CSS file and every page that's linked to that CSS file will get that change. All right, And that, that's, that's a great news. Again, it's great news when you only have two pages. It's even better news when you have 10 pages or 20 pages or 100 pages or whatever. All right, so we're going to generally always do it this way, put it in its own page, put it in its own file. That way we can link as many pages as we need to to it and it will be consistent. All right, now I looked at HTML colors and we noticed According to this source, that there's 140 colors that are supported by all browsers. So, some of them are like the typical names that you'd expect, like blue, black, and so on. Other colors are ones that, you know, ghost white. Did you know that was ghost white? Neither did I. 
honeydew, light green, light salmon, light pink, linen, and so on down the line. Now, these are 140 colors, all right, which is a lot of colors, all right? But there may be an occasion that you want a very specific color that doesn't fit one of these, all right? So there are what are called hex codes. There's actually a couple ways that you can designate a color. One of them is with the name. All right, which there's 140 of them that work across browsers according to W3 schools. The other one is the hex code, which I'm going to review how the hex codes work. But the good news is, if you don't understand how the hex codes work, if you can copy and paste, you're still in business. All right. So, for example. Slate gray has a hex code of pound sign 708090. So I can copy that. And I can put that somewhere where I want a color. So I'm going to put that up here. Now with the hex codes, you start with the pound sign or hashtag depending on how you prefer to call it. And then you put the hex code. So if we do that, I forgot to save it. If you do that then, it'll change it. And of course it will change it in both places. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Generally, as I'm demonstrating CSS, I'm not always worried about making a beautiful looking web page. Right? I want to simply explain how it works. Um, part of your job is to make beautiful web pages by picking good colors that go together. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes here. So. I can express a color either by putting the name of the color in or I can put in the hexadecimal code, which in this case is 708090. So now the font to that isn't black, but it's a, a version of gray. Let me explain to you how these hex codes work. And here's the good news. I'm going to take I don't know, five, ten minutes to explain this. If you don't get it, who cares? All right? You can just do what I did and copy and paste because most color resources will give you the name and will give you the hex code. The hex codes work like this. There are actually three pairs of what are called hex digits. That's why I said hex code. All right. And we'll start out simple. Hex code means hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a number system that's not base 10, but it's base 16. All right. In our normal numbering system, we're base 10, which means that a number like this has one in the hundreds position, two in the tens position, and three in the ones position. And the digits that we can use in a normal number are one, two, three, four, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hexadecimal are base 16, which means that the first column is still if I have a number like this, that's a decimal number. This represents the ones, this represents the 16 column, and this represents the 256 column. Now, 
we have essentially three pairs of hexadecimal numbers to form one giant hexadecimal number. And the digits in hexadecimal are the same 10 plus six more. Plus A, B, C, D, E, and F. What's the highest two-digit number in decimal? Nine. Nine, the highest two-digit number would be two nines. What's the highest two-digit number in half decimal? Two Fs. What's the lowest hexadecimal two-digit number? Zero, zero. And the lowest two-digit decimal number is also zero, zero. So what number is bigger? Okay. Twenty. It's the two zero. All right, because this is just like a two-digit number. You compare first, there's the same number of digits, you compare the, the left digit with the leftmost. This one's bigger, so that's a bigger number. Same thing here. Two zero is a little bigger than one F. All right, so back to numbers. This first number represents how much red is going to be in the color mix. The second number represents how much green is going to be in the mix. The third number represents how much blue is going to be in the mix. RGB. All right. So, let's remember that. RGB. Think of this as like turning lights on, focusing lights on that projector window. In fact, back in the old days, when big screen TVs were projection screens, right? And you actually had three projection beams. One projected a, a red beam, one project, projected a green beam, and one projected a blue beam, all right? And they had to be lined up right, or, or you got like multiple images, and those were a mess. You know, technology is so much better now uh, for that kind of stuff. But at any rate, what do you think the color FF0000 would be? It's red. Red is turned up as high as possible. And there is no green and no blue thrown into the mix. All right. So if I had three lamps, the red, and, uh, the red one's turned up all the way, the green one is turned off, and the blue one is turned off. So let's play with the color field. I'll put in FF, or actually let's, let's play with the background of the body. This may temporarily make the page unreadable, but at least we'll be able to test the colors. So pound sign F0000. If I save that, the page will be red. And notice it's a very, very, very vivid red. All right? Very bright red. All right? What do you think would happen if I change the number to pound sign AA0000. Zero, 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 zero. What hexadecimal number is bigger? A or FF? FF. Alright? Because again, remember, what are our digits? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So, if we compare the leftmost digit, F than A, 
So, than AA. So effectively, we've turned down the red lamp a little bit. Imagine this is a light that's on a dimmer, not a switch to turn it on or off. So we turn that down a little bit. There's still no green or blue. So what do you think that would make the color? Duller or, or darker? So this would be a darker red. So let's go and do that. Very good. So if I make that, then notice it's a darker red. Pardon me? Exactly. If I all zeros, that means all three of the lights are turned off, which would make it black. Um, all X. It would make a white. What if I made them? Um, what would that be? This shade, of shade of gray. Right. Would it be a darker or a lighter shade of gray? Kind of medium, but it would be favored towards the darker side of gray. All right, because if we look at it, four is towards the darker end of things. All right, so if I make this pound sign four, 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 four. then it's sort of a darker shade of gray. If I were to make this something like all A's, it's a lighter shade of gray, like sort of a silver almost. Now, what if we start mixing colors together? What would Zero zero F F B. Okay, I heard a couple things. You said like light, red. light red. Okay, purple. Why did you say purple? Because it is red turned up all the way, no green, and blue turned up all the way. So we get. Purple. Now that looks like a pinkish purple. That might be the monitor or the projector. All right. How can I make it a blue, a more bluish purple? Turn the red down. So what would be a number that would be lower than FF in hexadecimal? AA. AA. Actually, any hexadecimal, any two-digit hexadecimal number will be lower than FF. All right, so AA would be an example. So if I do that, there it's getting a little bluer. That's more like what I would think of as purple. All right, if I set these to AA as well, it's going to be a darker shade of purple, and it's going to be neither red or blue. If I make this number lower, it's going to be a bluish shade of purple that is dark. Now, what would something like this be? A very dark purple be more bluish than reddish, but it would be very dark and at a certain point it might be indistinguishable from black. So if we looked at this, um, might be hard to tell on the screen that it's black. I can sort of tell here that it's really a dark shade of purple. Now, this is a little counterintuitive, but it's true. If I add 
and green, what do I get? I, I actually get yellow. All right. So if I have equal amounts of red and green, I get yellow. If I wanted orange, I'd cut the green out of it. So I'd go down to AA. I get more of an orange. Now, again, the good news. Let's say you nodded off for the past 10 minutes. All right? If you, if you did, wake up, because I'm going to tell you the good news. The good news is, is you could do a lot of web development without really knowing any of that. I mean, obviously, the more you know, the better shape you're in, right? Well, it was like those old commercials, the more you know, right? The more you know, the better off that you're in, uh, the better situation you're in. But if you don't know it, you can copy and paste. So let's Google... Exactly. HTML colors. And we even get a little picker here that allows us to pick a color. So we can say, all right, I want this to be, drag it around, yeah, that's the color blue I want. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on the light side of blue. Yeah, that's the color blue I want. Well, guess what? There, copy and paste. And there you go. You got that color blue. So even if you don't know why that is, I mean, if you look at that, You can probably tell that it's going to be a bluish color because there's more blue than anything else. But there's also a little bit of green and a little bit of red in there. Could you tell that just by looking at it? Well, I don't know, but it is. All right. So there you go. All right. And all you need to do is copy and paste from that. So there's a lot of good tools that help you pick colors. All right. There's another. Uh, way of doing colors, and that is through an RGB code. And an RGB code, you do like this, RGB 191, 21, 21, you can probably tell that that is uh, red. Uh, not the brightest red, all right, but you can also specify the colors with an RGB code, if you'd prefer. HSL Hue, saturation, and a word that starts with L. <laughs> the, the first two are definitely hue and saturation. The third one, Dave, you got a guess? Light? Well, let's see. Maybe it will tell us. Hue, saturation, and brightness. So the L stands for brightness. Right. And there we have that color red. I don't think HTML allows you to put in your color that way. Um, there might be other tools like Photoshop that allow you to. Let's see what happens if we do that in our HTML document, or actually in our CSS document. Oh, I stand corrected. That's another way to do it. Or maybe I just didn't realize what we were trying to do. And if you do something that's totally goofy, like that, it'll make it, it'll ignore it altogether and you'll get white. Yeah. Or whatever the default color for the page is. So yeah, if you put something that's totally wrong in there, it'll do that. So I guess you can put HSL colors in there. Okay, now. Okay. Read everything 
Okay. Update. That very well could be. That could be a change with, H with HTML5. Because um, I never recall seeing that, but again, um, it's not like you have to do it all these different ways, right? You find a way that works for you and live it up, you know? I mean, just change the colors. Clarification. I was wrong on Twitter being higher than 1F because 1 would represent the 16 and you would have the 16 added in. So I confuse things by giving the wrong answer. Okay. Yeah. 2 zero would be higher than 1A because, because there'd be two 16s in 2 zero and 1A there'd be one 16. Okay. Now, what about colors that go together? Right? Do you ever see people that like they put on an outfit and it's like, wow, that jacket goes with that tie perfectly. And the pants as a totally unusual shade, but wow, it really goes with their shirt and jacket. Alright? I'm not one of those people. Alright? <laughs> Usually it looks like I got dressed in the dark. Alright? So what do you do if you don't have that innate sense of matching colors? Well, there are scientific principles that let you know what colors go with other colors. All right? It's not only personal preference. All right? And you can look up and you can actually Google color wheel, HTML color wheel. And there's another, there's a number of resources that are useful. There's one that I like. This one, where you can pick the shade that you want and the style that you want. So I'm going to pick orangish and I'm going to pick monochromatic. Monochromatic simply means that all my colors are going to be some shade of orange. The other choices, there is adjacent colors, there are triads, there are tetrads, and then finally freestyle where you can just do whatever you want. I'm going to stick with monochromatic. Let's say I was doing this website for fall. All right, Orange is a nice fall color, right? So I'm going to go and I could say, for example, yeah, background on my page this color. And what it will do is it will give us, yeah, there we go. have to click on it to copy. So I have to go, I can go and say I want the background of the page to be this. My H1s, maybe I want to be this. The color of the font, maybe I want to be, wrong one, this. And it shows us how that goes together. Yeah, and it doesn't look bad. All right. Um, and again, if we spend a few minutes tweaking it and playing around with it and so on. Now, you might notice that this gives you like like four colors, I think. Yeah. This gives us like four colors. Four or five colors. Five colors, it looks like. Um, what if you want more than five colors? Well, at that point, I would say, well, let's think about this for a second. You certainly could have more than five colors on a page. You could actually, literally, with CSS, make every tag its own color. But is that something you want to do? No. All right, probably not. All right, just like a room. If you're painting a room, you might have a couple colors in it, right? 
uh, a color, a contrasting color, and then maybe a second contrasting color, and so on. We're going to use colors not just to look nice, but we're going to use colors in a purposeful way. And we're going to use colors in a way that helps the user organize visually the content on our page. All right? So we're going to use it to create a mood. All right? I mentioned that this is fall, so we would want a fall-looking website. So we're creating that sort of mood. But we're also going to use it in a way to organize it by giving the different headers a different color and the different fonts and so on. In addition, you always have white and black and different shades of gray that you can go to. And maybe some other neutral colors. All right? So I could, for example, make the background, if I wanted to introduce some color in there, I could make the background these white. If I wanted to. And I can make these this font black. All right? So what are the important things from the day? Number one, the whole idea of the difference between HTML and CSS, whereas HTML shows the content and logical structure of the page, CSS shows the physical layout and the appearance of it. We're going to put these things in separate files. The reason for that is so that we can share the CSS across many web pages and only need to change one CSS file to change all of our web pages. We looked at a number of different ways that you can use colors, all right, um, or define colors. Color names, hex code, RGB, HSL. And finally, uh, we looked at a way that you could generate colors that go together. This, if you will, is sort of the technical part of CSS. Like, how do I do it? Web development always has the technical part, but it also has the design part. Like, how can I use colors effectively to help strengthen my message instead of being a distraction. I could again, as I said before, make every tag on my page a different color. But that would be a mess. There'd be no consistency. People would have no idea uh, what does it mean if something's red. Where in this case, if you use colors judiciously, you can use colors to help design that. I am very curious about what HSL is, so I'm going to Google it before we finish up. Health Science Library, of course. HSL color. Lightness. Whoever said lightness wins the, the prize. All right. Um, and again, sometimes, like they're used in, per, in a particular software package, like this one is used in the, in the Lightroom editor. Hue, saturation, and brightness, apparently other ones call it. All right. Um, that's all I had for today. Even if the assignment doesn't require it, you're welcome to do these things to practice. Uh, a good way to learn any kind of programming is to take something you've already done and just play around with it. What if I do this? What if I do that? All right, so that's a lab. You know, we call it a lab for good reason. It's a place for you to experiment. It's not just for you a place to get your work done and turn it in, but experiment, learn things, try things out, and see how it works. All right, I will be up in lab in a second. Yes? What business room is it where the computers are always open? Uh, BU 104. They're not literally always open, but yeah, they're open most of the day. You just, the only thing is you need your ID. All right, see you.